are these people? We're going to talk about what's going on in the in in London. You know, I got yelled at this week because I said I did a story a couple of weeks ago about about Britain and what's going on in London, and I called it the UK. And they're like, nothing's going on in Wales, and nothing's going on in Nor in, in Ireland. Stop doing that and stop talking about uh, the U. Stop mentioning the UK. There's a difference between Great Britain and the UK. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Great yeah, Britain, but also not really. Well, you know. Except that the pogroms, the they said that there were no real pogroms and towns that were beating the crap out of Muslims and pulling them out of cars, like we, like we reported on a couple of weeks ago. Um, that yeah. was not happening elsewhere around the United yeah. Kingdom. That was only happening. Yeah, in we get it. The Irish were too busy getting drunk in pubs and fighting over who lost their favorite soccer game. Right? right. Like, we get it. You know? We John know. Jonathan Cook is in. Oh, by the way, yes. that was the first one. Common Dreams, Indie Media Award honoree. Um, Jonathan Cook also an Indie Media Award honoree. Oh, speaking of Indie Media Award honorees, if you are able to, we are, we have um, commissioned the Zago Brothers to create illustrations of the caricatures for all of the Indie Media Award honorees. He's just about done with all of them, as well as the logos for the outlets. They look amazing. Uh, if you can contribute and support, really appreciate anything you guys can do. We really we really could use it. Um, again, we want to also do something. We're going to be doing a fundraiser for Shanda and doing a fundraiser stream. You'll be hearing about that over the next coming weeks. And then... Um, once we're done with this, we want to help Angel. It's Angel's birthday weekend. Happy birthday, Angel Rivera. And the handsome cynic does a couple of shows on INN, and we want to be able to hook him up with a new machine, a new PC. His has been struggling, and he's been doing this a while, so we want to see if we can help him out. But I want to get to what's been happening, and this is why it's so important, um, is what's been happening in, in, the, in Great Britain, and we're worried about in them bringing it and happening here. But we need dissident journalism and we need activism. But what Jonathan Cook has been reporting, now remember, they don't have free speech in England like we do here. They don't purport to. They have, they have laws about how you must report and what you can and can't say. But now we've got Keir Starmer as the prime minister and he seems to have taken on the Democrat version of censorship. All right. His purges of labor have mutated into the arrest of Palestine supporters. And this is where we've got, of course, Sarah Wilkinson, very famously, I think, was that Friday morning I woke up to see that she was arrested in her home. Yeah. Like, brutally. And mm -hmm. then they took, we'll, we'll talk about what they did to her. So Jonathan writes, the arrest yesterday of Palestine solidar solidarity activist. Sarah Wilkinson, following the arrest of journalist and friend and in the media award honoree Richard Medhurst last week, both based on an improbable claim that they violated Section 12 of the Terrorism Act, is definitive proof that Keir Starmer's authoritarian purges of the labor left are being rolled out against critics on a nationwide basis. You know, we saw this years ago when Corbyn was you know, was running for prime minister and they smeared him and tried to take out yeah. anyone that was pro-Palestine in labor. He says, now safely ensconced in number 10 Downing, Starmer can crush the basic rights of British citizens with as much relish as he earlier pummeled the remnants of democracy inside the Labour Party and for much the same reason. The British prime minister is determined to terrorize into silence critics highlighting his and now his government's complicity with Israel and its genocide in Gaza. Yes, thank you, uh, Gold. Thank you that uh, Sarah's been ordered no phone and no computer use. Correct. We're going to talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. Starmer would rather dramatically expand the scope of already draconian counterterrorism laws than act against the wishes of the United States either by stopping arms, arms sales to, fasc to a fascist Israeli government led by Benjamin Netanyahu 
or by joining South Africa's case against Israel at the ICJ. There, judges, of course, we know have already ruled that the slaughter of tens of thousands of Palestinians over the past 11 months is a quote-unquote plausible genocide, especially if you ask Special Rapporteur on Genocide Francesca Albanese from the United Nations, who, of course, Israel has referred to as Hamas. The next step is for South Africa and the many states backing it to, to persuade the world court that the genocide is proven beyond doubt. And I know that Colin and Reef have extensively covered this on INN News and check out all the coverage of the ICJ hearings that they've done. Um, yeah, I think I think the thing with that now is like using that to pressure other countries, like because you don't necessarily have power over Israel, but you have power over other people within the Hague's jurisdiction that you can like pressure if they are then sending arms, whatever, they are then complicit in it. So, you know, I, I, I'm already, we're already seeing steps in that regard. Uh, you know, I just, again, when, you know, U.S. empire is backing it, not a right. lot of power to be done in that regard. So, right. we'll Says the, us the usual Israel lobby ghouls, such as David Collier, have been salivating over Wilkinson's arrest. He faces up to 14 years in jail for supposedly supporting a proscribed organization, namely Hamas. According to reports, she was told she was being arrested over content that she has posted online. Police seized all her electronic devices. According to her daughter, she's been released on bail on the condition that she never uses those devices. That's right to jail, right away. That's frightening. Let's be clear. Yeah. The, the police are using the Terrorism Act in this way only because they have retrieved, received political direction to do so. Wilkinson's arrest is only possible because the police and Starmer, supposedly a human rights lawyer, are rewriting the meaning of the term support for terrorism, quote unquote. This is political repression in its clearest form. Traditionally, making it a crime to support a terror group was about giving the authorities the power to punish anyone who offered material assistance, such as sending money or weapons hiding armed fighters, or providing information useful to an attack, and so on. That, that has a legitimate description of aiding terrorism. Even yeah. standard criminal laws against speech usually require evidence that someone has credibly incited direct violence or put other people's lives in danger, such as the charges against those involved in recent far-right riots that included attempted pogroms against Muslims and immigrants, which we mentioned earlier. This is entirely different from criminalizing as support for terror, quote-unquote, any positive assertion about something done by a pro proscribed organization, all the more so if we remember that Hamas has not just a military wing, but also a political section and a welfare, welfare arm. So the need for careful distinctions should be obvious. Would praising Hamas leaders, even its military leaders, for agreeing to sit down in peace talks amount to support for a terror organization? Should it lead to arrest <clears throat> and jail time? <laughs> it, it was never a crime to support Sinn Féin, uh, Sinn Féin, which is the political wing of the IRA, in the sense of having complimentary mm -hmm. things to say about its longtime leader, Jerry Adams, or backing its political positions. Yeah. It, it wasn't even illegal to support actual IRA terrorists, quote unquote. What? Back in the early 80s, many criticized the Ulster authorities and the British government of Margaret Thatcher for their barbaric treatment of IRA prisoners. It was not an arrestable offense, for example, to support the hunger strike of the IRA's Bobby Sands that led to his death in the Mays prison. The Jewish News sets out apparent grounds for the, way, for the raid on Wilkinson's home, 
by a dozen or so police officers, again, a peace activist, and the decision to arrest and investigate her on terrorism charges. Those reasons, if they are right, should sound a terrifying chill down all our spines. That doubtless was Starmer's intent. This is a warning shot to all of us. Number one, according to the Jewish News, Wilkinson violated Section 12 by describing Hamas's airborne assault into Israel on October 7th as an incredible infiltration which it clearly was. By any measure, it was an infiltration. And my dictionary, as one of the main definitions of incredible, difficult to believe, or extraordinary in the sense of very far from ordinary. Even if she was thought it was, was a good thing, which she didn't say it was, um, again, that is not something that is a jailable offense or a terror, you know, w would be even sympathizing or aligning with what they consider, uh, whatever. Seeing Hamas use hang gliders to get past one of the most sophisticated military structures ever built to imprison millions of people is the very definition of incredible. It was indeed hard to believe Hamas managed technically to do what it did that day. Even were the police to ignore this established meaning of the word and instead assume that great or wonderful was intended as a description of Hamas breaking out from the cage in which the people of Gaza had been imprisoned for decades and deprived the essentials of life for 17 years, that would hardly constitute a crime, let alone support for terrorism. I mean, and again, this is what they're trying to pass here with the anti-BDS laws, what they're trying to now do on college campuses by smearing anyone that supports the Palestinian people or wants to see Israel and its ethnic cleansing and genocide as a terrorist or a Hamas supporter or, you know, a terrorist sympathizer. This is, this is what, mm -hmm. you know, this is again, this is like red baiting from this, from the 50s. This is very similar in practice. As is well established in international law. And again, this is from Jonathan K. Cook, Indie Media Award honoree. He's over on, on Substack. He's also at jonathancook.net. Oh, that didn't go through. This one? Yeah, that one. All right. Um, but as is well established in international law, Occupied people, such as the Palestinians, have a right to resist an army that occupies their territory, including through the use of violence, like it or not. Just ask Starmer about that right in relation to the people of Ukraine. Further, even as the Jewish news has to quietly concede, Wilkinson wrote her tweet on October 7th. That is the very day Hamas's attack happened. She could have had no idea at the time of writing that civilians were being killed in large numbers. She just knew that they had broken out of the walls. Now, what he says here, and he puts this in, in a big parentheses for the podcast audience, the extent of Hamas's atrocities against civilians on October 7th is far more disputed than the Western media cares to admit. It quickly became clear Hamas did not, as claimed, kill babies, let alone Hamas. behead them. Hamas. No substantive evidence mm -hmm. has been produced so far to show that there were rapes that day, let alone the use of rape as a systematic policy, as Israel and its supporters, of course, yep. allege, including the former CEO of Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg, that had an atrocity porn video made. All right. He says... Some Israeli civilians we now know were killed by Israel's own security forces when the so-called Hannibal Protocol was invoked. Again, see INN News for extensive coverage about that. And yeah. other Israeli civilians may have been targeted by some of the armed groups and individuals not allied to Hamas that poured out of Gaza through breaches created in the electronic fence around the enclave. That's all in the parentheses added by Jonathan um, about October 7th and the day. He says, but even if we assume that both Wilkinson knew civilians had been killed that day, which we don't, and in large numbers, which we don't, 
and that her use of incredible was meant to signal her approval of the killings, which we don't, it should not constitute a crime to note the extraordinary military feat of breaking out of Gaza. No one should be locked up for, for being impressed by violence. If we wanted to make that some sort of principle, we would have to I go mean, around. If that was the case. Right. You know, that's what he all says. Those U, all those UK people shouting out Leon Edwards for boom, headshot, dead. Uh, they'd, they'd have some trouble, wouldn't they? Just a you little know? bit. Yes, sir. All those Patty Pimbleton fans, all those, you know. Well, he says, if we wanted like, to make that some Michael sort Bisping. of principle, we would have to go around arresting large numbers of Zionist Jews. Um, who's the guy, Michael, what's his name that... Uh, Walks around with the Israel flag on UFC. All right. Oh, yeah. I forget his name, but yeah, he's right. one of the Brazilian guys. Right. But arresting large number of Zionist Jews and non Jews in Britain who've been keen to voice their enthusiasm for Israel's months of slaughter in Gaza. So, again, double standard. It's okay to say that you're okay with the, with Israel, quote unquote, defending its borders. Ridiculous. They, they don't have. It's all within yeah. their own borders, not defending themselves. They're imprisoning these people, and it was a prison break. Now, she says, uh, Jonathan also writes, the Jewish News also cites Wilk Wilkinson's praise for Ismail Hanye, head of Hamas's political bureau, shortly after he was assassinated by Israel in Tehran. Forget about the fact that Israel assassinated him. She referred to him as a hero. All right. As a con as context, let us note that before his murder, Hanye was widely viewed as a moderate, even in Hamas's w political wing. Living in exile from Gaza, he appears to have no foreknowledge of the October 7th attack. He was one of the main players in efforts to end the bloodletting in Gaza and bring about a ceasefire through negotiations with Israel. So naturally, Israel killed him. And that's okay to celebrate yeah. if you're in the UK. But if you defend and you, and you question that, you're apparently now going to be arrested, or you could be. Killing Hanye well, was... I'll, go ahead. I'll tell you my theory. Um, so, do you know of a little policy in, I guess, Great Britain? Want to get that correct. Make sure it's Great Britain, not the UK. Although it also might be UK-based, but called Phantom Parrot. Are you no. aware of this? No. So a phantom parrot, which there's a whole uh, INN, you know, segment on it that you can go look up called phantom parrot that I know not many people have you watched because the views are very low on that. We see the numbers. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but it's essentially with this terrorism code, which they can pretty much it is at the uh, bailiffs, you know, like discretion they, they get to just just right decide whether you're a terrorist or not um phantom parrot essentially you are forced to give up your phone your laptop your whatever and they will create a phantom copy of everything on those devices every connection you have every photo saved every file every everything they just literally copy it and then hand you your devices back. Nice. Right? So I'm betting that between Richie's and this woman's, that that is the intended purpose, to get whatever information on their technology they can. Yeah. So yep. I would assume yep. that it's so information gathering, less persecuting, but they'll do that too. So, yeah, um, again, killing him, killing Hanye was intended by Netanyahu to bolster the hardliners in Hamas's military and political wings by sabotaging hopes of a ceasefire. Israel's government has been able to continue its genocide, of course. It is no more unreasonable to view Hanye as a hero for conducting a political struggle to free the people of Gaza from what the world court has decried as an illegal occupation and a system of brutal Israeli apartheid than it was to view Sinsfein's Jerry Adams as a hero for his political struggle to free Northern Ireland's Catholic community from the oppressive rule of Britain and Ulster loyalists. 
Yeah. You, you may disagree with Hanye or Adam's politics. You may denounce anyone who supports their positions, but you should most certainly not be in a position to lock such supporters away. Not if we want to continue believing, believing we live in a free society. Adam spent many years as an elected member of the British Parliament, though he refused to take up his seat in Westminster in protest. No one ever seriously suggested those who supported him, either by calling him a hero or voting for him in elections, should be arrested and jailed. Anyone who had done so would rightly have been called out as monstrously authoritarian and deeply anti-democratic, which is what mm. a lot of these people actually are. Mm. Now, he says, finally, the Jewish news suggests that Sarah Wilkinson made historic online posts. Historic! Some eight years ago, amounting to Holocaust denial. Wilkinson apparently disputes this and has argued that the allegations were a smear campaign, which we know that the, that the ADL lo loves doing that. But even if we assume the worst, that she did actually cast doubt on the Holocaust, rather than being smeared as having done so, that should not be a matter for the terrorism police. Having irrational, unfounded, or immoral views are not the equivalent of support for terrorism. Not even close. Yeah. Let us remember, too, that even if Britain's terrorism laws are going to be enforced so expansively, the first person who should be arrested for supporting terrorism is Starmer himself. Months ago, he insisted numerous times that Israel had a right to block Food, water, and power to 2.3 million people in Gaza, which is a policy yeah. that Israel has indeed pursued. It's a war crime. Yes, and has resulted in, man, in a man-made famine that's starving Palestinians to death and causing also disease like polio to come back. The ICC's prosecutor is seeking Netanyahu's arrest for that starvation policy because it is a crime against humanity. And I don't even want to watch him say so because it's just disgusting. But you you can watch that. Yeah. Starmer, the again reminder, he's a human rights lawyer. Knew that the starvation human. of Gaza was terrorism, or collective punishment, as it's known in international law. And yet he gave that very act of terror his full throated backing. And <laughs> yeah. That's a great, a great line. Deep throated back. In yes, at this I was. Point. Go ahead. That was. Well, no, it, yeah, we're good. And and his words <laughs> had much more power to influence events than Wilkinson's ever could have. Of course, as opposition leader, he was in a position to add tangible pressure on Israel to stop its starvation policy by pointing out it amounted to state terror. He chose not to. <coughs> As prime minister, he's in a position to advance the arrest of Israeli leaders for their terrorist acts under the principle of universal jurisdiction. He can also stop arming the genocide, and he's done neither of those things. If we had a functioning system of international law, Starmer would undoubtedly be at serious risk of ending up in the dock of The Hague himself, accused of complicity in war yeah. crimes, as would the entire Which U.S. Is. Congress, as would the U.S. president... Yeah. And our military leaders and a lot of other people. Which is already starting to happen. I mean, I don't know about happening to actually get people in cuffs, but, you know, there's definitely been some countries use that ICJ ruling to go after other countries near it. Yep. You know? We now so. face, finally, we now face the terrifying Orwellian re reality that a genocide complicit prime minister can repurpose Britain's counterterrorism laws to jail anyone who opposes Israel's genocide and Stormer's complicity in it, charging them with support for terror. Not even terrorism, but just support yeah. for terror. Anyone who says ever that, that they like hummus, they could potentially be a attacked with supporting terror. Or, or they like yeah. Palestinian olive oil. You got a watermelon flag. Or watermelon, you got, exactly. You know, Starmer right. wants to be judge, jury, yeah. and executioner, and we must not let him get away with it. You have a red triangle in your name on Twitter or, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, I... Any of the above. 
that could that could happen anywhere like here um stories like this yeah. as reflex to say <clears throat> is why we are demonetized on youtube we just got hit again for some <laughs> kind of a medical thing last night uh talking about the thing yeah. about polio and israel polio the who <laughs> vaccine stuff with gaza kids which like they'll you they'll get you a three a three-day pause in the slaughter for that so yep you know just gross but, um yep so again put that up these amazing people including a lot of them are in chat we did get two new subscribers to indiemediatoday.com substack this week paid subscribers so thank you um judge sturdy and ben aiken thank you so much ben aiken over over across the pod in in london and that, that's really cool to get some support from Britain as well. I'm done. Yep. Deborah, wow. Deborah blew us away on Patreon with a subscription last week, too. Thank you. Jonathan Henrik was yeah. uh, gave during boats last week. Thank you so much for that. So, again, it's it's coming through, and, and you guys are coming through for us, and we really, we really appreciate all, the, all, all that you're doing to support independent media because where else are you hearing stories like that? I mean... A lot of independents are talking about the censorship that's happening and the, the crackdowns in the UK, but nobody on corporate media, at least from that kind of a framing, they're all perfectly no. happy to smear these people as terrorist sympathizers and as going along with that narrative. Turn on MSNBC and God forbid what, what you hear about they're saying about the UK. It's it's all just fear mongering and, and ridiculousness. Speaking of ridiculousness. Our friend Laura Kay, and I'm going to breeze through this one quickly. Counterterrorism police focus on the real enemy, journalists with the wrong opinions. I bet this makes you feel safer. She is the queen of snark and the queen of satire, and nobody does it better. All right. She's talking about asking why the government is determined to protect Israel is now a hate crime, and feeling a twinge of empathy for Palestinians is now a thought crime. Express, expressing firm disapproval of British politicians counts as a death threat and mentioning any of the Prime Minister's 357 U-turns is now misinformation. Yeah. She's joking, of course. But a woman was arrested in Liverpool for saying Netanyahu is going a bit too far, isn't he? And a manhunt is underway for a terrorist who said he doesn't like seeing Palestinian children suffering horrible injuries. Not only was this considered hate speech... It was also misinformation because the BBC has explained that Palestinian children probably can't feel pain and therefore don't matter. God. Plus, mm -hmm. Israel has the right to bomb children in self-defense, and when they do, we sensibly avoid naming the killer. This is why the mainstream media is more trustworthy than social media. Again, with big tongue-in-cheek yep. and big slash s, this is all sarcastic. Okay. Unfortunately, the, the BBC let its standards slip. By reporting a Palestinian blogger was killed by an alleged Israeli airstrike. Alleged. This was stupid because everyone yeah. knows only Israel is doing airstrikes in Gaza. The correct approach was to pretend the blogger was a Hamas terrorist and it was okay to wipe him off the face of the earth. Yeah. Again, this is heavily tongue planted firmly in cheek. You're allowed to say you fully support genocide when Israel does it, but you're equally allowed to say this issue is too complicated for a simpleton like you to understand. Neither of those opinions will get you in trouble. Surprisingly, you are allowed to criticize the government, but only if you think they're not going far enough. I think Pierce Morgan's already experienced that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. She's great. Normal Island News dot co dot uk read this article okay here the government's good think website has published a number of sensible steps to program the public and stop them from diverging from groupthink here are my favorites this is real by the way social media users much must, must pledge allegiance to neoliberalism when they open an account the that's a joke they must quadruple the likes of government ministers to make them look popular and uh, the, you know, all memes must be vetted by the Ministry of Truth prior to publication. Nia Jankowitz was certainly like that. All bloggers must register with the government and wear an electronic tag on their ankle. And of course, police dogs will be set on anyone who calls Rachel Reeves a red Tory. So mm. she's just hilarious. If you're, it's it's not just journalists, bloggers, social media's 
and users and your neighbor who's had too, who's had a few too many who need to be censored. It's the judges at the world's highest court, of course, the ICC. All right. This is because Western democracies have value free speech. Right. Unlike the bad countries where people have the wrong religion and or skin color, we're we're much better than them, aren't we? Again, Normal Island News. Check out Laura. She's great. She just had a baby. Congratulations. Again, she's also she she has Kofi. So you can hook her up on Kofi. We're also on Kofi, co-fee.com slash any news network. Where we are, you can hook us up there because YouTube decided that we're not worthy. Um we're not worthy. We're not worthy.